So another way to solve differential equations is to use what's called antiderivatives, or sometimes called integrals. Okay, so if we have a differential equation, differential equation, d f dt is equal to some function of time, f of t, right, where this is a pure time differential equation. Right, we can solve this differential equation with the antiderivative. Right. So we're saying that if the derivative of capital F is little f, then capital F is the antiderivative of little f. Right. So we'd say that f of t is the antiderivative of little f of t, right? So we use this integral notation. So this is an integral. It's not an s. This is called an integral. And then the thing inside, let me make this in blue. This is called my indefinite integral since it has no bounds. Inside here, this is called the integrand. And this is what we're variable we are integrating slash anti-differentiating with respect to. I'm not sure if anti-differentiating is a word, but we are taking the anti-derivative with respect to this variable t. Okay, so let me just make sure that's what I wanted to say. All right. We would say that f is the anti or is an antiderivative of little f f of t is an antiderivative or we could say the integral of little f of t okay and it basically means that f is a function whose derivative is little f right that is f of t is a function whose derivative with respect to t wrt means with respect to wrt with respect to t is little f of t okay so if we're able to kind of figure out whose function you know what function f has derivative f of t, then we have a solution for this differential equation, right? Because if we know that f is a function whose derivative is little f, then I could try it, a function, it'll solve this equation, and then I have a solution, okay? But as we saw kind of before, we need to determine the initial condition in order to get a particular antiderivative, right? To get a solution to this differential equation, we need a, uh, initial condition, right? Because if I just take the integral of f of t, right? If I just take this in general, right? If I do this indefinite integral of little f of t dt, right? So I'm saying I'm taking the antiderivative of this. I get this antiderivative f of t plus some arbitrary constant c, right? So this is called an arbitrary constant c, right? It's some positive, or maybe it's not positive. It can be positive, it could be negative, it could be zero. It's some constant number, because when I take the derivative of this equation, I get the derivative of f, capital F, which is little f, and then the derivative of a constant is zero. So whenever I take the integral of some function, I get a whole family of antiderivatives, okay? Antiderivatives. So the notation and the uh, terminology is a little confusing here. So we're thinking of an antiderivative as kind of being like a particular f with a particular constant c, right? Or, or a particular solution to differential equation with a given initial condition. And we'll refer to this whole family of antiderivatives. We'll call that the indefinite integral, okay? 
So the indefinite integral will have this plus C term. The particular antiderivative will just be some capital F. Okay, so let me show what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is not, not the right thing. Oh my goodness, I want this one. Okay, there we go. So here I have some function in red, and I'm going to plot a particular antiderivative of it. Okay, so if I plot an antiderivative of this function, I basically are anti-differentiating this. Right, so I find this x to the fifth minus x cubed minus 2x plus 1. If I was to take the derivative of this equation, right, the 5 would come down, I'd get 5x to the fourth. The 3 would come down, I'd get 3x squared. This minus 2x plus 1 would turn into a minus 2. So this, in red, is the derivative of this blue equation. Right? But I could have had any constant sitting here at the end. Right? I could have also had this one, right, where I have minus 1 instead of plus 1. Right? If I... Uh, take the derivative of this function, I still get 5x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 2, right? It's the same, it's a different function, right? Because it's off by a constant, but it has the same derivative, right? So while a function only has one derivative, it has a kind of infinite number or a whole family of antiderivatives, right? So this red function has a whole family of antiderivatives. And so here I've plotted four antiderivatives, right? And they all differ by a constant. Right? But I'll, I'll have, you know, for every constant that I could think of, I have another antiderivative with that constant. And they're all anti, you know, all these functions have the same slope, right? They're just differing by a constant, right? They all have this red function as their derivative, but they're different functions themselves. So it's a whole family of antiderivatives. So the indefinite integral would be like the collection of these, or, or we would say it's just x to the fifth minus x cubed minus 2x plus c, where c is some constant to be determined later. Okay, so let's switch back. Okay, All right, so we obtain a whole family. Okay, so how do we compute one of these antiderivatives, right? And then, you know, given an initial condition, we can find the solution for the particular antiderivative, right, for that constant c, and the, you know, exact solution to our differential equation, okay? All right, so if I had this differential equation at the top, capital D F D T is equal to f of t, I would take the antiderivative and then I would plug in my initial condition, whatever it is, to find this constant c to determine which antiderivative I want as my solution, okay? So how do we actually compute these antiderivatives? Okay, so we're gonna build up these antiderivatives using uh, basically our derivative rules, okay? so. If you are good at taking derivatives, you will probably be good at taking antiderivatives. You just have to do everything backwards. Okay, so let's start with the power rule. Okay, so the power rule for derivatives, right, says that if my function f of x is x to the n, right, then d dx of f, right, or d dx of x to the n, well, the n comes down and then the power goes down by one, right? I get n x to the n minus one, right? And so if I was to make this n plus one, just to make the notation easier here, right? It's the same thing, right? It'll be n plus one times x to the n plus one minus one, okay? So that's just the power rule for derivatives. So if I were to divide both sides of this equation by n plus one, 1 over n plus 1 times df dx, right? And this is the same thing as putting it inside the derivative because of constant product rule for derivatives, right? And then on the right, it's just x to the n. And so now I see, okay, I have some sort of power rule for antiderivatives, okay? Right? Because the derivative of this function here gives me x to the n. So now I know what the antiderivative of x to the n is, okay? So that tells me that uh, the antiderivative 
of x to the n dx, right? So the integral of x to the n dx is going to be this function here, because this is a function whose derivative is x to the n, right? So the power rule says that the integral of x to the n with respect to x is uh, 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1, and then plus some constant c, because this represents the whole family of antiderivatives, right? If I have any constant here, I take the derivative of this, right? Let's just do a quick check. So this is the power rule for integrals or antiderivatives, right? Let's do a quick check. Let's do an example, right? f of x equals x squared. So the integral of x squared, according to this rule, would be one third, oops, one third x cubed plus some constant c, right? And let's just check that. And what do I mean by check? I mean, let's take the derivative of the right-hand side and make sure that it actually gives us x squared, right? So if I call this uh, ddx of one third x cubed plus c, right? I get three times one third x to the three minus one plus derivative of constant is zero. So I'm left with three times a third goes away. I'm left with x squared, which is exactly what I thought it should be, right? I'm asking what function is x squared the derivative of? Well, the function that x squared is the derivative of is any function that looks like one third x cubed plus some constant, right? And for any constant, it will have the derivative x squared. So that's the antiderivative, okay? So then we have some other rules. Uh, and so basically, this power rule will work for any n, right? except for n minus one or n equals minus one because then that that is like one over zero and that doesn't make sense anymore right so it works for any n except n equals minus one okay so this will be a special case that we'll deal with later okay but but any power it'll work like this right you're basically doing the power rule in reverse okay there's other rules for integrals. There's also the constant product rule, right? Which basically comes from the constant product rule for derivatives, right? So if I have uh, the derivative of some function times a constant, so a times f of x, right? Then that's the same thing as a times the derivative, right? That's the constant product rule for derivatives. And so for integrals, if I have a times f of x dx, that's the same thing as a times this integral of f of x dx, which would give me a times my f of x plus that constant c. And I don't need to have a times c here because this constant is completely arbitrary. So if I put a times c here, that's fine. Um, it just means that when I'm solving for c, I'll solve for, for c and I'll have that a there. But, but basically the a just changes this constant to a different constant, but who cares because we know what that constant was in the first place, okay? So that's the constant product rule there, right? Basically, you can ignore constants that are multiplying your function when you're taking its antiderivative. You can just keep the constant there and it'll still be there at the end, right? The other rule is the sum rule, right? So if you recall from derivatives, we said, okay, the sum of f and g, if I take their derivative, that's the same thing as df dx plus dg dx, okay? And we have the same thing for integrals, right? If I have f of x plus g of x in my integrand, right? This is the same thing as f integral plus the integral of g, okay? Nothing, nothing fancy happens here, okay? And so with the power rule, the constant product rule, and the sum rule, I can take the, the uh, antiderivative of any polynomial, right? Right, so if I have, let's say, f of x equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, right? Then I can basically... Uh, apply all these rules together to kind of define define this antiderivative, right? So let's take this antiderivative, f of x, 
write the integral of f is the integral of 3x squared minus 2x plus 1 dx. Right? So we can use the constant product and the sum rules to kind of pull apart these different pieces. So that gives me 3 times the integral of x squared dx minus 2 times the integral of x dx plus the integral of 1 dx. Okay, And you can think of 1 as 1 times x to the 0 so that we can use that uh, power rule. Okay, and then we'll use the power rule here. So this gives us 3 times... Again, it's 1 over n plus 1, so 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3, x cubed. Right? The power goes up since we're taking the antiderivative. Here we have minus 2, again, 1 over power plus 1, so that gives us 1 over 2, times x to the power plus 1. Okay, so that goes up a power since it's the antiderivative. And over here, we get 1 times 1 over power plus 1 times x to the 1. Right, power plus one. And then of course we need a plus a constant, right? The arbitrary constant, because when I take the derivative, this will become an x squared, this will become an x, this will become an x to the zero or, or a constant, and the constant will become zero. And zero is always there, right? So this constant just kind of has to be there every time I take these indefinite integrals. Okay, and then let's just finish solving this out. So three times a third gives me x cubed. 2 times a half gives me 1, so I get x squared. 1 times 1 is 1, so plus x plus c, right? And so this is our antiderivative, capital F of x, right? This integral of f of x dx is x cubed minus x squared plus x plus c, right? And we can check that this works, right? Especially when we're learning antiderivatives, it's always good to just check it because we're really good at derivatives at this point. We're probably not so good at antiderivatives since we just started doing it. So let's just check every time. So if my antiderivative is x cubed minus x squared plus x plus constant, then I take its derivative. I will get 3x squared, right? Minus 2x plus 1 plus 0, right? And that is indeed what we had up above, 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, right? So that is f of x. So check antiderivative we computed is in fact the antiderivative of that function okay so for any polynomial we can we can play this game we can find the antiderivative uh, the other building blocks we'll need are basically the antiderivatives of the other special functions we know the derivatives of right so other antiderivatives of special come special functions are going to come from the derivatives of those special functions Okay, so if you recall, right, the derivative of ln of x, right, was 1 over x. The derivative of e to the x was e to the x. The derivative of cosine of x was minus sine. And the derivative of sine was positive cosine. Right? If you remember those uh, derivatives of these kind of special functions, then we basically work from the right to get the antiderivatives on the left. Okay, so what is that? What do I mean by that? I mean the antiderivative of 1 over x dx is going to be the natural log of x plus some constant, right? Because the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, okay? So this is the n equals minus 1 case for power rule, right? So the power rule doesn't work for n equals minus 1 because, you know, x to the minus 1 or 1 over x has antiderivative ln. And the reason we have this absolute value here is because 1 over x is defined for positive and negative x. ln of x is only defined for positive x, so we need to have this absolute value sign here so that this thing has a slope or, yeah, so that the slope is defined for, for negative values, right? So this basically just mirrors ln on both sides and the slope is always one over x, okay? So, uh, you know, these are just derivatives that we'll have to, or antiderivatives that we'll just have to memorize, right? But they come from just thinking about the derivatives that we know 
in reverse. Okay, so the antiderivative of one over x is natural log of x with absolute value signs because of the way that these functions are defined with their domains being different, plus an arbitrary constant c, right? And so this concludes our power rule, right? n equals minus one is covered by this case here, right? The integral of e to the x, because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the integral of e to the x will also be e to the x plus c, right? If I take this derivative, I will get e to the x. Constant goes away, right? If I take the integral of sine of x, then I get minus cosine of x plus a constant, right? Because cosine has derivative minus sine, if I'm taking this uh, function sine, I'm saying whose function is this the derivative of? Well, minus sine would be the derivative of cosine, so sine should be the uh, derivative of minus cosine, okay? And then finally, the antiderivative of cosine is just positive sine plus c, okay? And so those are kind of the special cases of these sort of building block functions. And they're basically just the easy kind of uh, derivatives that we kind of memorized before, right? The derivative of ln was one over x, derivative of e to the x was e to the x, cosine was minus sine, derivative of sine was positive cosine. So then the antiderivative of one over x Give us natural log of x plus this c. Antiderivative of e was just e plus that constant. Antiderivative of sine is minus cosine, and antiderivative of cosine is sine. Okay, and then all of the time, whenever I take these indefinite integrals, I get that plus c, that plus constant. Okay, and so using these uh, antiderivative rules as kind of our building blocks, we'll be able to compute the antiderivatives of kind of more complicated functions in the future. All right.